Ramzan Kadyrov may become new head of Russian Interior Ministry. Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov, a key ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin, may take the post of Russia's Interior Minister, Russian propaganda media reported, citing sources. As the Tsar Grad edition notes, the terrorist attack at Croker City Hall and the subsequent detentions of migrants may lead to a rotation in the post of the head of the Russian Interior Ministry. There are several candidates for Vladimir Kolokoltsev's place. The possible appointment of Ramzan Kadyrov to this post is assessed, ambiguously. On the one hand, his tough leadership can be effective in crisis situations. On the other hand, Kadyrov has no experience in leading a federal structure. Other names are also mentioned in the material. In particular, one of the possible candidates for the post of the head of the Interior Ministry is the director of the Federal Penitentiary Service, Arkady Gostev. Previously, he worked in the structures of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and held the post of Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs from 2012 to 2021. The name of Dmitry Mironov, a former aide to the Russian president and ex-governor of the Yaroslavl region, was also heard. The possibility of Kadyrov taking the post has not been ruled out, although it could be more of a threat to the existing structures of the ministry than a practically justified decision, experts believe, Russian media noted. Kadyrov, leader of the Chechen Republic, has been among the most aggressive Kremlin allies in the conflict, urging Russia to ditch peace talks with Ukraine, claiming to have fought on the front line. According to Ukrainian officials, Kadyrov and Chechen fighters were involved in a plot to assassinate Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in the early days of the conflict. Kharkiv at risk of becoming second Aleppo. Kharkiv Mayor Ihor Terekov believes his city is at risk of becoming a second Aleppo if left without help to obtain air defense systems, according to an article published by The Guardian. Russia recently intensified attacks against Kharkiv, which had a population of 1.4 million in 2021, with the use of missiles, glide bombs and drones, destroying energy infrastructure and killing civilians, according to Kyiv Independent. Terekov said the U.S. Congress needs to pass the delayed $60 billion Ukraine aid package to ensure new supplies of air defense and to prevent Kharkiv being a second Aleppo, referring to the city in Syria that was devastated by fighting during the Syrian civil war. The cost of rebuilding everything destroyed or damaged in the city has already reached more than $10 billion, Terikov said earlier in April. Western officials believe that while Russia lacks the capability to launch a fresh offensive on Kharkiv, Moscow is making a coordinated effort to cut off supplies and create conditions that make the city uninhabitable, Bloomberg reported on April the 16th. Bloomberg's report echoed Terikov's remarks to The Economist that Russia aims to make the city uninhabitable for civilians. At the end of March, Russia destroyed all the electrical substations in Kharkiv, leaving Ukraine's second largest city without a stable power supply. While Kharkiv is at particular risk because of its proximity to Russia, lying less than 30 kilometers from the border, stocks of air defense are low across Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed on April the 16th that Russia managed to destroy the Tripilia thermal power plant in Kyiv Oblast in a missile strike on April the 11th because Ukraine had run out of missiles for its defense. China is ready to limit Russia's capabilities. China actively joined the settlement of the war in Ukraine. Xi Jinping said he supports the peace conference in Switzerland if Russia and Ukraine both take part. He also noted in a conversation with Olaf Scholz that Europe should not escalate the situation by providing military support to Ukraine. The head of the Center for Public Analytics of Ukraine, Veza Valery Glochok, suggested in a conversation with Channel 24 that Xi Jinping thus calls on the United States and Europe, together with China, to contribute to ending this war. Washington is constantly concerned that Beijing is increasing the volume of cooperation with Russia. That is why the head of China probably demonstrates that he is ready to limit Russia's capabilities in the conduct of hostilities, he stressed. Xi Jinping has not made such statements for several months. They were made after a meeting with the German Chancellor on the eve of the visit of the head of China to France. 
In addition, Paris invited Moscow to an international ceremony on the occasion of the 80th anniversary of the Allied landing in Normandy. All this indicates that very serious dialogues are underway at the highest level, in particular on the issue of ending the war, Glochok said. For China, as noted by Xi Jinping, it is important to maintain industrial logistics, chains and connections for the sake of stability and building the future. According to China's rhetoric, this means that it is ready to work with Europe, but without the United States. Beijing's goal is to break the link between Europe and the United States. At the same time, Western media promote the idea that China can influence Russia's war against Ukraine. However, it requires appropriate steps from Europe as well. Since the United States has lost the opportunity to resolve powerful processes at this stage, China is demonstrating its influence on Iran. Xi Jinping will also pay visits to France and Hungary. This indicates that the geopolitical situation is changing somewhat and the role of China is becoming very significant, said Valery Klochok.